There are so many attacks against our president, President Uru Kenyatta, at the moment in the media, that somebody who is new in Kenya would be forgiven for thinking that he is a candidate in the upcoming elections. Even Deputy President William Samuel Ruto has said about two days ago that this race for the presidency is really against Uhuru Kenyatta. It's him against Uhuru Kenyatta and not his candidate, Raila Odinga. That's what William Ruto has told us. William Ruto has also told us that the IG of police, the Inspector General of Police, is the most incompetent IG we have ever had in the history of our country. And actually the real IG, according to Ruto, is President Uhuru Kenyatta. Yeah, he's implying that President Uhuru Kenyatta is micromanaging everything, including the police. But of course the CS internal, Dr. Fred Matiangi, has recently shot back that the reason why William Samoy Ruto hates the IG so much is because the IG rejected a proposal to purchase police boots yeah, from people associated with Ruto who are selling those police boots for, wait for this one, 13,000 Kenya shillings per pair. And instead the IG of police purchased the same boots for Kenya shillings 2,900 only per pair. According to Matiangi, this made Ruto people see red and hence the current attacks. Anyway, there's so much venom against President Uru Kenyatta, which seems to be blind to what this president has achieved. He's not perfect, yes, but nobody's looking at his achievements. Well, our show today is about a very controversial statement based on truth that I'm going to make. Karibu sana and enjoy. I would like to start by reassuring those who are usually very concerned about my well-being that all is well because I'm wearing a crash helmet throughout this show today. <laughs> oh yes. Am I wearing a crash helmet because I'm about to tell lies? Am I wearing a crash helmet because I'm about to spew Propaganda? Yeah. No. I'm wearing a crash helmet today because I am about to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. The bitter, very hard to face, but obvious, very obvious truth. You see, we humans are very strange animals. We don't like the truth. All of us. Very often, the truth makes us start sweating and feeling very frightened, alarmed. Very often, the truth causes us great stress. Let me give you a simple hypothetical example. One day somebody comes to you and tells you that the father you have always known as your biological father is not really your biological father. And then to add insult to injury, he points to the village drunk. Ule mtu anakunyo mbaka na jikojolea na nalala kwa barabara. Yes. And he tells you, you see that guy? That is your biological father. Now, put yourself in that situation. Will you readily accept the truth? No. Because this truth goes against everything you have always believed. 
This truth removes you from your comfort zone. Yeah, for you to face this truth, you need to be more than courageous. And in most instances, you will be in denial. Uh-uh, that's not true. That is propaganda. That's lies. And even when the DNA tests come through, you will say, no, there is a problem. This DNA test is not correct. And then you'll head to Google and Google, is it possible for DNA tests to be wrong? <laughs> yes, that is human nature. And that is the reason why, quite often on this channel, I usually sugarcoat the truth. Or even I avoid it altogether. I just give hints towards the truth. But I don't speak the truth bluntly. Because I'm scared. People not receive it. People not be able to handle it. In my view, when you have a job like mine, you also need to take into careful consideration the ability of your audience to receive your truth. That is usually important. And don't get me wrong. You don't mislead them. You don't tell them lies. But you just give them hints towards the bitter truth which they will never accept. But on my show today, I'll not be sugarcoating anything. I will tell you the naked truth as it is. And that is why my crash helmet is firmly on my head until the end of the show today. So here goes. Out of all the four presidents we have had so far in the country called Kenya, it has now become very clear that the greatest president we have ever had in the history of our country is a man called President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. Now those who agree with me will give you many reasons. And indeed there are very many obvious reasons. Infrastructure. Handling some unprecedented crisis, eh, Homa Uchina, and so on and so forth. But I will give you my reason number one, which I believe is so important for this country. So very terribly important that everything else pales in comparison. And as promised, I'm going to state it very bluntly. His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta will go down in history as the president who ended the national hatred of the Luo community. Now for the sake of those who are unfamiliar with me and this channel, I need to state from the onset that I am not a Luo. I do not hail from the Luo community. My father came from the Kamba Nation, yeah, born in Machakos County. My mother was a Bukusu from the Mulembe Nation and she hailed from a village called Kiminini. Yeah, some of you may know it. So I'm not a Luo. I've never been a Luo. Let me also take this opportunity to ask you, if you're already enjoying this video, to give me a like yeah, so that this video may reach a wide audience because I believe it is important for our country. And of course, you can also go ahead and subscribe you know, if you don't want to miss any of the valuable content that usually comes out of this channel. And that is just not my opinion. It is the opinion of many. Now, most of us should know that this national hatred towards the local community was engineered, manufactured by the government. For political reasons, I have made several videos on this channel giving details of exactly how it was done and why. But to sum it all up, the Luo community was seen as a threat politically. And therefore that political threat had to be neutralized so that they don't come anywhere near the presidency of the country. That's really what it is. Now, the vast majority of Kenyans, and indeed many outside this channel, are not aware of these facts, which have been very common and frequent on this channel. And therefore, they have been born in the country of Kenya, and they have taken these lies, 
this Antiluo lies. And they have run with them. And it has spread until it became a serious problem in our country. Now for any man to confront something that is so deeply ingrained in the Kenyan psyche, in the Kenyan system, and fight against it actively and win, that takes courage. And if that president happens to hail from the community that has been most responsible for this lie, then I think we need a stronger word than courage. Oh yes. You know another presidential candidate took advantage of this to create hatred towards the president yeah, in his own community, in his own backyard. That was his secret key. If you didn't know, know that today. That is the reason why the deputy president is so popular in the Mount Kenya region. You know, I've often said on this channel, and I'll not stop saying it, that Kenyans, all other communities, need to meet somewhere one day and apologize to our low brothers and low sisters for what we have done to them over the years. And this thing may be more serious than you think. I discovered that one day when my late political lecturer, my biological dad, when he discovered that I was going to vote for Raila Odinga, quickly drove off, refused to give me a lift to go to the polling station to cast my vote. I had to walk for two hours to get to that polling station. Why? All because I was going to vote for Raila Amolo Odinga a member of the Luo community. Haven't you ever wondered why a community that has produced such brilliant minds has never been in charge of any major key institution in our beautiful country? I mean, if you go to any graduation at any top university in the country and you reach courses like engineering, medicine, those tough, tough scientific courses, you will hear Omondi, Oloch, Oloch A, Oloch B, Oloch C, Odongo, Odongo A, Odongo B. <laughs> and then you'll hear one Kenudia, you'll hear another Mutinda, Kasioka. Those are very rare. It is usually a river of oars <laughs> from our brilliant Luo brothers and sisters. Bottom line, they have been denied the opportunities by this huge problem, huge national crisis we had that has been ended by President Uhuru Kenyatta. In my opinion, for that alone, President Uru Kenyatta will go down in history as the greatest president Kenya has ever had. And it's going to be a very tall order for the president who follows Uhuru yeah, to be great, to be anywhere near as great as Uhuru is. No matter how famous that individual is already, it's going to be difficult. That's the truth. I'm not saying he's not going to pull it off. No. I'm just going to say he's going to start with a very tough job ahead of him. And I need to add that this national crisis in Kenya has not only impacted the Luo community, but it has impacted the country called Kenya much more. Let me just give you one simple example. You go to a foreign country say the U.S., and you ask to see the top specialist in a certain medical field. And of course it turns out it's an American. But his name is very interesting. He's called Professor Thomas Onyango, American. <laughs> of 
course he was born in the great country called Kenya. That person has been lost to the country and is benefiting the United States of America. While in Kenya, we don't have any such specialist. I think you now understand what I'm driving at. I believe if you only had one word to describe President Uhuru Kenyatta, you are limited to one word. That word would have to be courage. Because instead of taking the easy way out, the president has chosen the most difficult and predictable path in most of the things he has implemented. The fight against corruption being one of them. And I'm sure the president knew very well that corruption would fight back very hard. And I'm also sure the president knew very well that his own family history would be a huge disadvantage taking that path. But he still took it for a better Kenya. He still took it in making a decision that will stand the test of time. And of course there are a lot of other reasons to qualify our current president as the greatest president we've ever had. Infrastructure. The current infrastructural developments in our country are unprecedented. The speed at which they have been completed is completely unprecedented. Those are facts in the public domain. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the president is perfect. No. But then who is perfect? Yeah. Even you, who is looking for a perfect president. <laughs> are you perfect? And let's not even go into the challenges that any president faces. Yeah, because that will be a whole set of videos. Yeah, let's not even go there. The truth is, many people are in a big hurry to see President Uhuru Kenyatta leave yeah, in August as you get a new president. It is all emotional. And it is all based on the fact that we humans don't like the truth. We prefer the emotional truth that we believe. Anything else is disturbing and is not the truth. In fact, somebody once put it this way. The restriction of intelligence may be humankind's most baffling and self-destructive problem. <laughs> I need to repeat that. This restriction of intelligence by humans may be the most baffling and self-destructive problem mankind has ever faced in history. We don't like the truth. All of us. But it remains the truth. And Kumekucha once said that the truth is like a seed. It may be discarded. It may miss this rainy season. It may be trampled on. But one day, that truth will emerge from the ground. You see, fortunately, truth is very stubborn. Very. And the truth is, the greatest gift the nation of Kenya has ever had is to have President Uhuru Kenyatta and a man called Raila Amolo Odinga. Two politicians who love their country much more than themselves. Yeah. And to have these individuals on the stage in early 2018, that is the greatest gift the nation of Kenya has ever had. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.